everybody, your favourite Uncle Frog here again. Now, um, you may have noticed I haven't been around for a while, and there were some, uh, uh, a couple of good reasons, um, a few bad reasons. Um, mainly, I, I had this really <laughs> big project I was working on, which was um, sewing an Anglo-Saxon tent. Um, obviously, that became very intense, and it wasn't my intention uh, to leave it so long. Uh, there's also been some other reasons, you know, a revolutionary cheese council, <laughs> not so good. Uh, but today, uh, I thought I'd talk about um, riveted six millimeter chainmail. Uh, quite a fiddly thing, but um, you can you you find you find this being sold many different places. Um, I had to make up some recently for uh, an Aventail, uh, for a helmet, um, and I ran into some, some interesting, um, I call it problems, uh, issues, challenges, whatever you like to call it, um, which I'd like to go through now, but I'm gonna change the, the camera around so the, yeah, you can actually see what's going on. So we'll, um, I'll, 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 do, I'll do one of those cut things and we'll, we'll have a look closer down here, which is something I've already set up. Okay. Okay, so riveted chainmail. If we are um, looking at eight millimeter, we have two options. We have the standard round rivet, or we can also have, I mean, what's referred to by the archeologists as, as a staple. It's really just a triangular piece of metal that goes in, um, which acts as the rivet. Um, when we're talking about six mil, we have one option uh, on the market at the moment, um, and that is the round rivet. I um, follow the European convention of um, each link going through uh, four links. And so I think if I hold that up there, you can see that that's um, four, uh, four, four links going through, through one link. Now, um, obviously the, the, the mail is made up of um, solid links and um, riveted links. The solid links generally are of a good standard, however it's worth checking them because um, you get the occasional uh, not so good one, such as this one here where you can see the top um, is not quite round. However, when it comes to the uh, riveted ones, you really have to go through and check because you end up with quite a few that are either um, totally off, broken, or alternatively, like this one, which hopefully you can see, um, way too close to the edge and so if you riveted that um, it would just break so be careful with those things also when you go and buy it the most of the 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 sites they advertise some kind of riveting tool um, and i bought one which is which is this and this is where the the problem started um, if you have a look on this tool i think you can just about if i can catch the light properly yeah you can see that there is a hole here and there's also, oops, uh, there's also a hole on the other side there. Um, I tried taking the, um, um, the, the, <laughs> I've lost myself there. So let me just, I'm trying to do two things at once. It never works. I can't multitask. And I have to try and now very fiddly try and get the, the, the rivet through the hole. And hopefully that will work. Right, okay, so that's that's gone through. So, it doesn't come with any instructions, and so you would assume that you put the, the rivet through like that, and then you take this tool and you place it over and line up the two holes and squeeze. If you do this, you end up with some misbegotten bent thing on one side and it really doesn't work out too well. And I, I have a neatness gene. I, I like things to be nice and neat. And so um, I came up with a different solution which gives you a nice finish. And this requires some clippers and a mini vise. Um, I don't know if you can actually see, but uh, this is a very old one because it comes from the uh, USSR. But you know, still works. Okay. Take the clippers, place them down here, and chop off most of the rivet. Because if you think about it, when we're riveting, when we're peening over rivet with a hammer, we don't want kind of five, six, seven millimeters sticking out normally. We just want a couple of mil 
sticking out and that makes it a lot easier to rivet. Um, and so you just ping that off and obviously there's a, a large ricocheting noise and things ping out in different directions. Um, if you do share <laughs> the place with somebody, um, yeah, do it when they're not around and, and get a good quality vacuum cleaner. Then uh, we pick this up off of our, our little part here and we just put it into the corner of the vise and um, tighten the vise up. Now, obviously this is quite slow, but as I was only doing an avent tail, it didn't really bother me too much. <laughs> there is a problem as well. Um, you are going to essentially start wrecking your vise doing this because you can probably see now, maybe you can see, this has closed in a few mil, well this, this is a few mil closer on this side than it is on this side. And so the thread underneath here is, is getting damaged. Um, it's worth swapping over, do one on one side, one on the other, and if you're only doing a small amount, it doesn't really matter. It's not a big deal. Um, but you do end up with a very nice, so that, that's, the, that's the original side. We'll hold that up there, is it gonna focus? Yep, that's the original side. And that is the riveted side. So that works quite nicely. I think if you're going to be doing a lot of these things, then you should, um, if you do have this tool, which has got a hole on both sides of it, um, either grind down um, one of these ends, or preferably if you have a friend who has something like a MIG welder or whatever, um, just stick a spot of weld in there and flatten it down. And I think that will work extremely well. However, as it stands, um, the tool they give you just doesn't do the business particularly well. Um, this is a workaround and it gives you a very, very nice finish. I did try hammering it, um, but the item is so small and you get so much bounce that it's very hard just to hammer the thing over. Uh, possibly if you um, um, held the, um, the ring tightly somehow and hammered it, that would work but it's such a small fiddly thing and there's always a little bit of bit of spring um in this so even when you've got it kind of you know really closed up you've always got just a little bit of a gap which gives you a bit of spring so when you're trying to hammer there's a bit of bounce there so i think you're probably better off using this or welding up this okay cool i hope you enjoyed that um if you did then um I'll just put this here because it looks nice. Um, if you did, please don't forget to do the old um, rating, commenting, subscribing, and all the other kind of gubbins that you're supposed to do. And I'll see you next time. Bye.